Hi, thank you so much for joining me. Um, in this segment, I'm going to be continuing my conversation of performing calculations with isotopes. This time I'm kicking it up a notch by taking a look at how we determine the percent abundance. So let's take a look. Um, we don't know the percent abundance of silver 107, so I'm going to call that X. I don't know its fractional or percent abundance. And I don't know 109, and it's not likely the same, so we're going to call that Y. And I am given the, ma the atomic mass that would be put on the periodic table, 107.87 atomic mass units. All right, so uh, what I would do, let me get that stray little dot out of the way here. Okay, um, so it doesn't look like a decimal point. What you might want to do is estimate, especially if you're doing multiple choice. So I have 107, 108, and 109. And what's on the periodic table, the 107.87 uh, leans towards the 107 more. You can think of it more as a teeter-totter. And so what we will find, what we should find if we do it right, is the percent abundance of 107 should be greater than the percent abundance of 109 because it's weighted heavier towards the 107. Now, at this point, we appear to be stuck because I have one equation and two unknowns. Unless you remember that x plus y is equal to 1. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the method of elimination to solve these two simultaneous equations. You can use matrices. You can use substitution. But because this x plus y is so simple, the method of elimination works quite well. So I've got 107. I'm just rewriting my top one. And I'm going to multiply my bottom one. You can multiply by either 107 or 109. I'm going to multiply it by 107. So I avoid. I like to multiply by the smallest number. So I, I'm going to go through and multiply the whole thing by 107. As long as everything in this equation is multiplied by 107, I maintain my equality. And then I'm going to subtract those two equations. So let me get myself some more space here and see if our prediction was correct. So when I add these two together, my x is eliminated and I get 2y is equal to 0 0.87 and y is equal to four, uh, 0 0.435. Now, that's my fractional abundance. I want my percent, I have to multiply by 100. So the percent abundance for 107 is equal to 40, for 109, excuse me, I found y, 109 is 43.5% for silver, 109. Now, you could do the whole thing again for silver 107 to get Y, but we don't really need to do that because the sum of percents is 100. So to find the 107, I take 100 minus 43.5, and I find, if I did my math right, I have 56.5% for my silver 107, and indeed our prediction was right. We predicted we would have a greater abundance of the 107 isotope. Okay, I think that's challenging enough that it, it would be helpful to see another example. So let's take a look at, at, at this one that I found. I probably found it online um, or made it up and looked up things in Wikipedia because unlike some teachers, I actually really like Wikipedia. I find it quite helpful. All right, so this time I have rhenium and I have two isotopes. So again, let's sketch out that number line. I've got two isotopes, 185, 187, and then I've got 186 in between. And the question tells us that the average atomic mass from the periodic table is just over 186. 
And so we can now guess that my percent abundance for 187 is going to be greater than my percent abundance for 185. So let's perform that calculation. So I have 185 times x, I don't know it's fractional abundance, plus 187 times y, and that equals my average atomic mass on my periodic table. One equation, two unknowns, except I also know that x plus y is equal to 1. So I'm going to use the method of sub or elimination. You could use substitution. You could solve this as x is equal to 1 minus y, substitute in. I just find that's a lot more algebra because we have such a simple equation here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by the smaller of the two, which is the 185. So I have 185x plus 185y. Just multiply, apply every term. 185, sorry, with a black background, I did it for one of my favorite students, Rachel. It's a little harder on me. Okay, so let's subtract those. X is, that goes away. I end up with 2y is equal to um, 1.2. So y is equal to 0 0.6, which means that the 187 isotope is 60% abundant, and the 185 must be 40% abundant, because the sum of the percents have to equal 100. Okay, a little bit more algebra than you probably wanted to delve into, but I hope that by doing it this method, we've simplified it as much as possible. Thanks for joining me on your journey of learning chemistry.